Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name is Andy. My channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're going to go through Twitter, see what people are sharing on social media. I'll interject my financial opinions, generally related to three different topics, wealth building, commodities, and or financial topics. Uh, so we're going to dive right in, take a look, see what people are sharing. Uh, you can follow me at Finance, Finance and you can join our community, finding-value.com, where I dive deeper into this, all these topics and sectors looking for uh, individual companies and sectors to invest in. Uh, and sharing all of that information with everyone and the technicals uh, and the fundamentals that I follow. Uh, Mayday coupon code is still active if you are interested. Uh, Gregory Zuckerman, he says, Stanley Druckenmiller at Grant's conference, bipartisan fiscal recklessness is on the horizon. He's short bonds equivalent of 15 to 20% of his portfolio. George, so George Soros, would be embarrassed of me for not making it a bigger bet. So he is short bonds. So what, what that means is that he thinks that bond prices are going to go down and uh, interest rates are going to go up, is what Stanley Druckenmiller is betting on. Uh, if we were getting this big recession that was deflationary or deleveraging, uh, those people would be betting on interest rates falling and bond prices going up. So Stanley's taking an opposite approach to those that think a near-term recession is coming. So he's he's basically saying um, the government is too reckless. They're spending too much money and interest rates need to go higher. That's going to benefit. That's going to be inflationary. And that's going to benefit, you know, areas like oil uh, and, and, and gold and silver. Uh, gold and silver, gold generally leads with this monetary stuff going on. Um, gold's been rocketing. We've seen that. Silver's probably going to follow next. We'll get a, a big impulse on silver to the upside. And then I think oil is going to follow after that. That is my guess uh, of sequence of events. Uh, so he's, he's shorting it. That's his opinion. Breaking, uh, DOE announces, Department of Energy, announces another 6 million barrels of crude oil have been purchased for the SPR. Uh, for delivery February through May of 2025, Department of Energy has now purchased over 55 million barrels to refill the SPR. Um, I know we, we really took a hit there, but uh, if they're buying barrels down here, they think oil's cheap. I think oil's cheap. Uh, we we have a ratio, and I didn't check recently, but it was around 40, 40 barrels to one ounce of gold, and that is historically a very cheap price. It doesn't mean it can't get cheaper in the short term, but but it, but it's a good value. No no matter what time frame you look in history, it is of great value. Garrett says everyone is waiting for the crash. The only crash we will see is a continued decline in the USD purchasing power. And I would agree with that. I think that's the only crash we're going to see. So people are looking for a crash in, I think, real terms. Uh, nominally, they may not get it. So the crash may, may, may happen where it doesn't happen in dollar-denominated stock or anything like that, but it happens over in the dollar. Uh, we're also seeing all of these charts squeeze up, like the Australian dollar, the Brazilian real, the Canadian dollar against the United States dollar, which historically means that a commodity bull market's about to break out whenever those break out. Um, and those are all commodity-based currencies. The dollar, the, the Australian dollar, has already broken out. Um, the British pound has broken out. Those have already broken their downtrends. So I'm looking at the Canadian dollar and I'm looking at some of these other ones uh, for confirmation of a breakout because I don't see why they wouldn't follow. So that's... Um, that's going to be positive for commodities, it's going to be positive for emerging markets, it's going to be positive for those areas where their currencies are going up at a faster pace than the dollar. The one thing that is interesting is to see how interest rates and the value of the dollar kind of move together. Uh, we've got Stanley betting on interest rates going up, but that would also make the dollar stronger. So I'm, I'm curious to see how this all works out. Because if rates go up, I, I want to see where the dollar goes, and I want to see how that works its way against these other currencies. Because those currencies are already starting to break to the upside, not the downside. 
which which makes it a very interesting mix there because you've got two competing uh, viewpoints. You've got the currency saying that the dollar is about to go down, but generally the dollar goes up when interest rates go up. And then you've got Stanley Druckenmiller and some of these guys saying, no, 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 we, we're going to get interest rates to go up. Uh, so it's, you've got those two forces that I see in the market that are conflicting. So this is from the reminiscences of a stock operator. I want to read this to everyone. Um, this is how I view the markets, very different than everyone else. So I'm going to read it, and, and this is kind of my viewpoint on a lot of the sectors that I'm in. So let me just move this down. To the, okay, here we go. It says, you did, Mr. Harwood, and I'm very grateful to you. So this guy gave a stock tip. He used it, and it's up seven points. He says, indeed, I am, sir, but hold on. Let me talk. And did that stock go up seven points in 10 days? Didn't it? It did. And I'm obliged to you, my dear boy, but I couldn't think of selling that stock. You couldn't, ask Elmer, beginning to look doubtful in himself. It is a habit with most tip givers to be tip takers. No, I couldn't. Why not? And Elmer drew nearer. Why, this is a bull market. The old fellow said it as though he had given a long and detailed explanation. That's all right, said Elmer, looking angry because of his disappointment. I know this is a bull market as well as you do, but you'd better slip them that stock of yours and buy it back on the reaction. You might as well reduce the cost to yourself. So Elmer thinks the stock's going to go down. Um, much like a lot of these other people are saying the relative strength indicator is high. The we could get a pullback and you know, go ahead and sell it and I'll try buying it back 20, 30, 40 points lower. So what he says here is, um, my dear boy, said old uh, Partridge, in great distress, my dear boy, if I sold that stock now, I'd lose my position. And then where would I be? Elmer Harwood threw up his hands, shook his head and walked over to me to get sympathy. Can you beat it? He asked me in a stage whisper. I ask you. I didn't say anything. So he went on. I give him a tip on Climax Motors. He buys 500 shares. He's got seven points profit. And I advise him to get out and buy him back on the reaction that's overdue even now. And what does he say when I tell him? He says that if he sells, he'll lose his job. What do you know about that? He says, I beg your pardon, Mr. Hardwood. I didn't say I'd lose my job. Cut in old turkey. That's his nickname. I said I'd lose my position. And when you're as old as I am, and you've been through as many booms and panics as I have, you'll know that to lose your position is something nobody can afford, not even John D. Rockefeller. I hope the stock reacts and that you will be able to per repurchase your line at a substantial concession, sir. But I myself can only trade in accordance with the experience of many years. I paid a high price for it, and I don't feel like throwing away a second tuition fee. But I am much obliged to you as if I had the money in the bank. It's a bull market, you know. And he strutted away, leaving Elmer dazed. So I want to describe what happened here. What is happening here is that the old guy who's gone through all the booms and busts, he doesn't want to lose his position. And I, 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 would, I say this all the time. It's very hard to buy back into a position if it goes way up on you. It's easy if it goes down because you can buy it back and you've, you've got that profit if you sold it and you can buy it back. But it's hard to do it if it goes in the opposite direction. So what he is doing is he doesn't want to lose his position no matter what. Even if there is a retracement, he doesn't care. He wants to keep the position on because we're in a bull market. That's exactly what my view is. You've got all these people around Twitter saying all these things, getting scared, emotional. Um, but nobody can hold their position. They can't hold the position through volatility. They're, they're, they're getting afraid, emotional, selling out. Um, they are uh, trying to time the market, mistiming it. it it's a S-H-I-T it, it's a show is what I see. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this person's experience and tying it with my experience um, where I didn't do that well timing the market last bull market and i'm just writing it 
If we're in a bull market, I'm riding it for the entire bull market. I'm not going to lose my position, uh, exactly like we have in this book here. Uh, but I do see a lot of people very emotional, selling out, trying to time the market, saying, oh, we're, we've got relative strength indicator at this level and I'm going to sell out. It's like, good luck. Good luck. Uh, sometimes you get the big retracements. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it goes back up on you and you lose your position. Uh, Bitcoin versus NASDAQ from the Great Marti. It says, update, the cattle continues to believe Bitcoin is a standalone security asset. When the NASDAQ gives way, Bitcoin will head into the abyss, in his opinion. So this is the NASDAQ composite. Uh, and here's, the bit, here's Bitcoin trading very similarly to the NASDAQ. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, which some people think, uh, is linked to the NASDAQ. Other people think that it's a safe haven and that it is not linked to the NASDAQ. Uh, we'll find out here. This is the first time that Bitcoin is going to go through an expansion phase of real estate in America. Um, it has not gone through that same, um, I'll say the, the same conditions as say the late 2000s. Those conditions are coming here soon and we'll see what Bitcoin does. Um, I think it will go down. I think it's gonna follow what the NASDAQ does or it's gonna go sideways or down with the NASDAQ uh, for a period of time, probably for the next decade. That, that would be my guess. All right, coming down, we've got investment wisdom. The true contrarian waits for things to cool down and buy stocks that nobody cares about. Uh, what I call it is uh, ninja buying. Uh, I want to get in there and, and buy something when no one's looking. So ninjas, they kind of sit in the background. They don't want to be noticed. And, and that's exactly the stocks that you want to buy, the ones that people aren't noticing. Uh, if they're not noticing it or they are negative on it, that means that it's generally cheap. Uh, and it hasn't moved yet. Everyone chases the shiny object. Everyone chases the loud noise. Uh, they go and investigate it. So uh, in stock markets, you know, talk, uh, when the stock goes up, everybody talks about it. And everybody goes and investigates the stocks that go up a lot in a short period of time. Uh, that's not really what you want to do. What you want to do is you want to chase patterns uh, squeezing patterns, falling wedges, double bottoms, like all of those types of patterns and note that no one's looking at and people are quietly accumulating it, uh, ninja style. So that that's right. Peter's right. You want to buy it when it's down. Sell at 95, buy back at 70, uh, below $70. Not a bad trade for the U.S. administration buys 6 million barrels of crude. So it looks like they're, they sold uh, and are buying it back now. Uh, Grady says, long term, gold is looking very good in all fiat currencies. But that, but that is mainly because all fiat currencies are going down, not because gold itself is going up. The now accelerating fiat debasement will surprise most. Uh, and this is the chart that he's got. He's got the Kondratiev. So it says, note that the Kondratiev macro cycle is a so-called long cycle, and it is not to be mixed up with the comprehensive technical tool cycle analysis. Examples of other long cycles are the 15-year commodity cycle plus the 18-year debt cycle, which is the housing cycle. And this is the possible time span for the fifth K-wave top is somewhere out here in the 2030s, or, uh, 2028 to 2039 or so. Uh, Dell CEO Michael Dell just filed for a sale of $1.2 billion worth of Dell, so he's getting out. Probably a good time. Uh, platinum squeezed between the green rails here. Uh, also, inverse head and shoulder contained within, so we've got a nice uh, potential squeezing here. Uh, there's the squeeze coming up right up against that top rail that we're trying to break out of. I'd uh, love to see a big breakout. Let me see what is projected. $2,100 if you take the bottom of the flag pattern and project the flag pattern upward. So he's got $2,100. bucks. platinum if we were to get a break here. Uh, is this projected move of the flag pattern. But that doesn't mean it has to stop there. Uh, Grady says, uh, this is Dow to goal ratio. Uh, the Dow to goal ratio below had a lower low in April this year after the two mega back tests. This confirmed further chart breakdown is coming. And last week, the ratio had yet another lower low. It means that gold is now set to outperform the stock market. A very important chart for the next global macro trend and with that, for global capital flows, huge sector rotation globally is in the making. 
Institutions watch this ratio, and they need to wake up from their outdated 60 stocks, 40 bonds thinking quickly, and they need to stop comparing themselves to the average of the sector, since most are wrong at big turns. And as often happens, some have copied this exact chart by just exchanging Dow for another index, or by charting the inverse ratio on the same time frame. Go with the original. It says also, do not do note how amazingly perfect that second blue backtest hits the blue apex of the 25 year blue triangle. That is price memory, just beautifully stylish. Uh, so here's your breakdown, and then you get a retest, and now we're breaking down where gold's gonna outperform uh, the Dow. This also occurs in all the commodity bull markets. So last time we, we broke down, we turned in 2000, we came on up, and then we permanently broke in 2002. Uh, there are very similar conditions that are occurring right now. Uh, we've got a weaker dollar. We've got the Canadian dollar and all these other currencies trying to break higher. We've got gold breaking out against the Dow Jones. All of these things are in alignment for a commodity bull market to rip. Uh, we are at the bottom of wave two. So we've got an Elliott wave structure going up. Uh, we've got wave one that's done. We're at the bottom of wave two. And I think we will head higher here uh, in uh, Elliott wave speak too. So to me, it looks like everything's in alignment. It looks like silver could rip here too. Uh, platinum's looking good. I mean, everything looks pretty good uh, from what I can tell from a technical analysis standpoint. Uh, the most important chart in gold. Um, so this is uh, gold against the 60-40 portfolio total return. This can confirm a new secular bull market as it did in 1972 and 2002. Close but no cigar, cigar still ahead of us, but perhaps only a few months away. A move higher will signal capital from the mainstream moving out of financial assets and into gold. Once that occurs, look out above. So gold continues to move higher. This is gold versus the 60-40 portfolio. And we are trying to still break against that 60-40 portfolio here. It did that in 2002 and had a big run. And we're about to do that again. Uh, so we could have a big move in gold outperforming that 60-40 portfolio. Uh, it says the inverted look, uh, this is 60-40 versus gold, is quite interesting. Gold and the 60-40 portfolio relative to each other are at same level as nine years ago. And there it is about nine years, or sorry, nine years ago would be over here. Coming on back. Um, here's another one from Grady. It says, when I hear classic contrarian investing sayings like, buy low, sell high, be a contrarian, buy when there's blood in the streets, be greedy when others are fearful. I think about this silver chart. It looks ready. Lifetime opportunity if grabbed. And this is silver versus the NASDAQ 100. Uh, this is your double bottom. We're at the bottom of the double bottom on the right-hand side. Uh, what he says, it's the everything except commodities bubble. And it's a reverse symmetry move is quite likely as general equities move into secular bear market and precious metals continue. It's now resumed secular bull market. And that's that money rota rotation. We also have up to all-time highs would mean silver outperforms the NDX by 30X. And that's going to be a combination of NDX going down and silver going up. Big, big time move here is possible. Uh, U.S. July power burn sets all-time record for natural gas. And there we are in 2024. Uh, that's the white big circles there. And we are starting to burn more and more natural gas for electricity generation um, year over year. Um, Great Marti says, as predicted, and I thought this was kind of interesting here, guys. 2.35 billion bank bailout, stealth QE in progress. The system is broken. Don't be alarmed. It gets much worse. And this is the overnight repurchase agreements. Treasury secretaries purchased by the Federal Reserve in the temporary open market operations. What's going on here? We had 100 mil, 100 mil, 100 mil, 100 mil, 2.53 billion just recently. What is going on? Now, here's another one from Jordan. It says, only four times a year, we get new monthly and quarterly charts. Weekly charts are more significant than daily charts, but less significant than monthly charts. Quarterly charts are even more significant than monthly charts. So here's a couple of charts that we're going to go through together. So this is the silver um, monthly chart. 
Uh, it says <clears throat> silver managed a good month after testing support resistance from 2020 to 2021 over the summer. It closed above resistance at 3146, but off the high of the month at 33. And there's that big guy right above support looking pretty good on a quarterly close. Uh, silver, so the quarterly chart shows some resistance at $32 in addition to the daily and weekly charts. Then there's the all time high resistance at around 38. Resistance at $32 has held the last two quarters. Uh, 32 is also a yearly high, so a close above 32 at the end. Uh, 32 is a yearly high, so the close of 32 at the end of December would be hugely significant for silver. Let's go back. Um, gold closed the month at 26.59 with another strong handle, even in the wake of recent sell-off. The measured upside target from the cup and handle breakout is $3,000. The monthly RSI is overbought, but as the vertical line shows, gold gets more uh, overbought in a secular bull before an interim peak. Depending on what happens from here, $3,000 could be a magnet for the next peak or merely a pause in a very strong move. Um, quarterly momentum compares with the early 1972, late 2005, mid-1978. So that's the RSI getting close to those levels there. Um, we've got GDX coming on up. Uh, that's also has, has a pretty strong close, uh, but still below some of the highs. GDXJ also strong close, but still below some of the highs for that. Headline U.S. oil production came in at 13.2 million barrels per day for July, but the adjustment is minus 425,000 barrels per day. Uh, implied U.S. oil production is 12.78 million barrels per day. So looking backwards, U.S. oil production is basically flat year over year. Production plus adjustment, we have May to July 2023 is just under 13 million barrels. May to July of 2024 is just a hair over 13 million barrels. So flat production. Now, I don't know if that has to deal with the pricing of oil or if that's everything she's got. I don't know. That's what I'm interested in. If this was 13 million barrels and we were at $100 oil or more, then I would say that's all she's got. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And if oil if oil does turn here and we go lower in, in shale oil, I, I think oil is going way up if that does occur. And that's where we're going to end it, guys. So that's what I've got for today. So give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website if you guys are interested. Uh, and we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value. And don't forget, I am releasing a midweek update today. And it'll be on the, the website with my opinions. See ya.